So hi, welcome. Um, so let's first talk about my daily conversations. Because it's kind of harsh here in Germany, not only because um, I, well, I can't speak German, so that's not really the problem, but because of what I do actually in the lab. So everyday conversation. So what do you do? I'm a developmental biologist. Was? <laughs> I study embryo embryogenesis. Was? <laughs> How to make a baby. Okay, now it's getting clear. Ach so. <laughs> ich verstehe. Du meinst? <laughs> well, <laughs> not entirely, to be honest. Because what I'm actually much more interested in is how actually you get from a fertilized egg to a complex structure like a baby. So it's the harder part of the job, not the funnier part, but it's the harder part. So actually, to get to this, this answer, to get an answer to this question, I'm looking at these guys, stem cells. And trust me, I've been looking at stem cells for quite a while in my life uh, by now. And if you look at stem cells for long enough, you end up with a baby. So um, just to prove I'm not joking. Now, if you look at this beautiful daughter of mine, I actually find it pretty hard to imagine that she once was looking like this. We actually all did. And it's even harder to imagine that a mouse embryo at a similar developmental stage looks like this. So you can see they're pretty similar, and that actually makes a mouse embryo a great tool to actually study human embryo development. Now, to get to this stage is so complex that we actually came up with a German word for it, which is Körpergrundgestaltstadium. Now, this word you can immediately forget, unless you really like to play German Scrabble, in which case I would have some other uh, suggestions. <laughs> so, no worries, I'm not going to pronounce them all, but right, okay. So, let's actually now get back to some science. That's what we're here for, after all. So, what I'm doing in the lab, I give these embryos, I give them really, really beautiful colors, as you can see, so I can see them better. And then I'll look at them at the level of the embryo, the level of the cell, and the level of the genes that are actually expressed in a single cell. So, we really deconstruct the embryo, so to say. And I'm especially interested in this part of the embryo, so it's essentially the tail of the embryo. Reason for that is that actually this still has the growth zone, so this small yellow population of cells, and it's a small population, but it's really important. If we take it away, basically the embryo stops growing, and eventually the embryo will die. So if I switch on a microscope in the morning, then actually I see structures that look like this. But it was just before Christmas 2017, I think, that I actually switched on a microscope, and I saw a structure that looked like this. So, what do you guys think that I had been doing? What was I seeing? Well, was it a mouse embryo with a genetic defect? Maybe a mouse embryo that was hit by a car? <laughs> Me using the microscope the morning after the Christmas party? <laughs> Not too unlikely. <laughs> or was it something else entirely? So, let's have some zalicht. Uh, so, A. B. C. D. Ah, oh, you guys are good, yeah. So, <laughs> it was something else entirely, actually. Because what I've been doing over the course of a couple of days, actually I've taken some of these cool stem cells and then some science magic essentially happened. And after a couple of days, I ended up with a structure that essentially looked like a tail of an embryo, just created solely from stem cells. So what are these stem cells that can actually undergo these magic? Well, these stem cells, they are taken from very, very early embryos green cells here, and actually we can put them in a, in a petri dish, we can give them the right candy, so to speak, and actually they start expanding and expanding and expanding, and we can keep them for years, for decades to come. And actually Martin Evans got a Nobel Prize for this in 2007. So just to prove that I'm not like talking bullshit, basically, I did an experiment for you guys, it's called the 10 year challenge, you may know it. So basically, here are stem cells in 2009, here are stem cells in 2019. There's actually nothing that looks as similar as these two, these two pictures, except, well. <laughs> so, so you can actually do some, uh, what you can do with these stem cells is pretty amazing, because uh, what people figured out last year is that you can actually also take stem cells and give them, so to speak, a different kind of candy. And what they will actually do is that they start to self-organize themselves in structures that basically look like a real early embryo. So here on the left, a real embryo, on the right, basically an embryo made from stem cells, they look basically the same. So when people started realizing this, it sparked a new field called artificial embryology. So what we're nowadays doing in the lab is that we're actually not only taking embryos and like deconstructing them, but we're actually taking stems on this and then making structures out of them that look like an embryo, so, uh, so to say. So we can do this for different embryonic stages. So here I nicely rank them. Up left you see very early artificial embryos and then 
bottom right, you see the structures that we are making on in the lab. So basically, they are artificial embryos at a pretty late embryonic stage. So why are we actually interested, interested in making embryos that, or structures that look like embryos at a later stage? Well, to answer this question, let me introduce you to this guy, Louis Wolpert, very famous developmental biologist. And I'm going to ask you a question again. What is the most important time in your life? Is it actually birth, death, marriage, or none of the above? So hands up for A, B, C. <laughs> wow, <laughs> God, it's Berlin, people are depressed. Um, D, <laughs> none of the above. Well, yeah, you guys are getting there. So what did Wolpert actually say? Wolpert, wise man of science, he said, divorce. Of course, he didn't say that. Um, actually, Wolpert said, it's not birth, marriage, or death, but gastrulation, which is truly the most important time in your life. So gastrulation, you still, I still have no idea what I'm talking about. So let's just look at gastrulation at work. Here in a zebrafish embryo, what you basically see is you saw a clump of cells, totally unorganized, and now you see very beautiful structures emerging. And basically, in the end, you end up with something, something that looks like this, and what we see here is basically a, a head, and we see a tail of the embryo, and we see all these beautiful colors that have sorted themselves out in different domains. We call this, as biologists, the formation of the three germ layers. So the mesoderm, ectoderm, and the endoderm. And basically, these three germ layers is, are very important because they mark the start of organ development. So here you see a picture of the human body, and you see all the inner organs that are basically derived from one of these three germ layers. And probably you can imagine that a lot can go wrong, so it is estimated that about 10 to 40% of miscarriages are due to defects at, at gastrulation. So we are actually, for this reason, very happy that we can now actually generate structures in the lab that basically look like the tail of the early embryos and are, that are basically displaying these three germ layers, because it allows us to study embryogenesis in much more detail. So now I'm going to tell you how these structures basically form. So well, you, we refer to this as self-organization. So you notice from nature, right? We have like birds that can organize themselves into these beautiful flocks, or we have like these beautiful snowflakes that consist of a lot of individual molecules that then form like these beautiful crystals and so on and so forth. And basically just like that, we can take stem cells in the lab and they, they will form these beautiful structures that actually look like a tail of an embryo. But actually, how this happens, this is still a black box to us. We basically don't know. What I can tell you is I can take these stem cells, I can put them in the Petri dish, give them the right candy, but then essentially some science magic happens, and in the end, I get these beautiful structures. And this is actually very frustrating to me. Just to give you an idea how frustrating, let's say it's Friday evening, after work, beers, and the only thing that you can be sure of after taking these beers is that you get completely hammered the next day. <laughs> Worst thing of all, you have no idea what actually happened in the meantime. And this is actually what I, I'm supposed to feel like every day, because I still, after one and a half year, I have no idea how these structures do it. I just know that they can do this magic. So take home message from, for you guys. I can nowadays, and we can nowadays, not only look at the real embryo, but we can actually also generate embryos solely from stem cells in the lab. And to basically know what is happening, we need to answer a lot of biological questions. But one of the most important questions that remains to be answered is actually an ethical question. As my girlfriend would put it on her first date, like she said, you're not some kind of Dr. Frankenstein, right, when I told her about my job. So why would she think that? Well, because of headlines like this, artificial human life could soon, soon be grown in lab after embryo breakthrough, or artificial humans like or labor, like laboratory 3D prints, placenta in bizarre experiment. Of course, these are bullshit headlines, right? So if you read these headlines, please don't think like, oh my God, what did a scientist do? No, think like, what did they actually do? And especially, why do they do it? It's not because we want to play God, what we actually want is happy mice. Because these structures can actually replace animal research at some point, Maybe, if we get there. And the other thing is that these structures could actually be generated, like in, we can generate thousands of these structures in a week, hopefully, and then we can get much more robust, reliable, reproducible research. So this is why we're actually doing it. And maybe, maybe in the end, yes, these embryo-like structures could help to decipher infertility, and then we would have happy parents, but this is a promise that I can't make yet. So thank you guys, and have a great evening.
Jesse Feenfried, your applause, dein Applaus.